Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at our second application of interference by division of amplitude, which is blooming of lenses, also known as anti-reflective coatings. So let's get started. It starts here by saying that expensive camera and binocular lenses have a special coating placed on them to ensure maximum light is transmitted through the lens. A thin coating of magnesium fluoride is applied to the lens which causes light to be reflected from the front of the coating and also from the glass surface below. The thickness of the coating is such that destructive interference of the reflected rays occurs ensuring maximum light transmission. And this is why blooming of lenses is also known as anti-reflective coatings because these coatings are going to cause a certain wavelength or frequency of light i.e. colour of light to not be reflected when it hits the lens surface. So it's anti-reflective, and this will ensure maximum light transmission. So we're going to go on and derive an expression for lens coating thickness. So it starts by saying, consider a ray of light moving from a medium of lower refractive index to one of higher refractive index as shown below. So here we have a picture very similar to the one that we saw for thin films, but it is different in terms of what's happening. Because this time we've got our air on the outside, then the lens coating, then glass, and you'll therefore see the refractive index increasing as we go towards the glass. So the refractive index goes from 1 to 1.38 to 1.5. And that means it's constantly increasing as we go towards the glass, which wasn't the case for the thin films. Remember for thin films we had the refractive index increasing into the film, but then the refractive index decreased again going from the film to the water. So this time we're stepping up the refractive index each time, and therefore we're going from a less dense to a more dense material each time. But again we've got the thickness or width of the coating labelled D here, and we've again got some partially reflected and transmitted light, causing these two rays R1 and R2 to be produced. It then says there is a phase change of pi at both the coating and glass surface since the refractive index of the glass is greater than the refractive index of the coating, which is greater than the refractive index of air. So we're seeing that when the light hits this first surface, because we're going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium, ray R1 will undergo a phase change of pi radians, and then if we think about ray R2, which is travelling this greater distance, then when it reflects off this second surface, again because we're going from less dense to more dense, i.e. a smaller refractive index to a higher refractive index from the coating to the glass, then the light here will reflect again with a pi phase change. So this ray R2 has also undergone a pi phase change, which wasn't the case for thin films. So we could say that to produce destructive interference, the coating of thickness D must create an optical path difference between R1 and R2 of half a wavelength. That is, we could say the optical path difference OPD is equal to lambda over 2, or half lambda. But the optical path in the coating is 2 times n times d, and we can see that from the picture. So remember the optical path difference is the difference in the distance travelled between rays R1 and R2, taking into account the distance travelled in the more dense medium here. So ray R2 is going to travel down this distance d, and then back up this distance d again. So we can say it's 2 times n for the refractive index of the coating, times d for the distance, the thickness. And that is the only difference in distance travelled between R1 and R2. So that is our optical path difference, 2n coating times d. So going back to here, we can see that optical path difference 2nd is equal to half a wavelength for destructive interference. And therefore, if we rearrange for the thickness coating d, we can divide both sides by 2n to get d equals lambda over 4n, where we've just got this 4 term because we've divided the half by 2. So this is our important equation that we've just derived, and d, it says, is the thickness of the lens coating measured in metres, Lambda is the wavelength of the instant light measured in metres, and N is the refractive index of the lens coating with no units. And you need to be able to derive this equation for the advanced higher physics exam, but you will see it on the relationship sheet as well. It then says to note that complete cancellation is for one particular wavelength only, partial cancellation occurs for other wavelengths. Lastly, it says that the wavelength chosen for complete cancellation is usually in the yellow or green, i.e. middle part of the spectrum. This is why the lens may look purple, often called a purple hue, because the reflected light has no yellow present. The red and blue light are partially reflected to produce the purple colour observed. So if you've ever looked at a camera lens, for example, and seen this purple hue on it, then that's due to this partial reflection of the red and blue light combining to form this purple colour. And you can see an example of this purple hue on a camera lens here, where you've got reflection of red and blue light combining to produce this purple colour. And that means that the coating has been chosen to cancel out reflections of light of our particular wavelength being in the middle part of the visible spectrum. And this would be light from the green or yellow region, which is undergoing destructive interference, and therefore there's no reflection of that colour. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.